presenting a project that uh, spans the entire United States at a level that is higher, if you will, on a higher plane, macro scale, if you will, um, uh, broader than any individual community, any individual city. And thus, it is quite, uh, quite an endeavor for us as a team. And let me talk a little bit about that. Our team. Uh, what I bring to this as a social scientist is evidence about health, human health response to nature, to trees, to forests, and um, the various urban greening elements of cities. Dr. Sagar Shah is our collaborator with the American Planning Association, the American Planning Association, the national office. So he has extensive background in planning as well as health, human health. When I first met Sagar, I was invited by the APA to join in a strategy, a series of strategy, strategy sessions called Future Shape to help integrate research more effectively into urban planning. And I was asked to bring the dimension of both urban nature, including trees, as well as human health. Our last partner uh, is the University of Maryland Environmental Finance Center. And so Dr. Jenny Egan, and Medessa uh, bring uh, deep experience in the economics and finance aspects of environment and greening in cities and beyond. And with, oh, and of course, thank you so much to the Forest Service for the funding for this project. Um, very, uh, uh, I, I'm seeing in the, the ongoing projects provided by or supported by the uh, Forest Service, this, this broader expansion of collaborative disciplinary um, interactions. And, and that's remarkable to me because it's a, it represents a, a really exciting moment in time as well as um, very um, uh, essential cross collaboration in terms of how we work, how we talk about our work and then how we make action happen. So think about what planners do, not environmental planners, not urban forest planners, but planners. Top, the, the, the agencies that guide the systems and how envision the systems and how they're implemented in our cities. And they do so for the sake of general where, welfare and quality of life. You see that in comp plans, the comp plan language of many cities. What the evidence just over the last decade, this surge, and you all are well aware of this, but the value of nature encounters for human health and wellness. Um, we're using that as the hook, as the uh, impetus for this planning project. And what do we uh, expect as outcomes? First of all, to generate urban planning best practices. Again, not just for parks, not just for trees, uh, but for green in the city as a system comparable to transportation, comparable to utilities, comparable to housing. That we take what is often scattered across multiple departments, offices, various tiers within the leadership hierarchy and elevate it to a system that has governance, that has budget and that interacts, interfaces with these other systems in a meaningful way. In this way, optimizing year by nature, and that of course includes trees, but it includes parks, it includes critical areas, it includes riparian areas, it includes habitat, and so on. And in this way, utilizing all potential nature elements to think of these broader systems. And with the idea then that how this is physically laid out on the ground is for health promotion, but acknowledging other stack benefits, other ecosystem services, uh, that are uh, simultaneously possible. And so we're putting forward products that will be practical, practical, actionable guidelines. In other words, what can planners do immediately if they grasp this concept? If they buy into this initiative, what can they do on the ground 
from the scope of comprehensive planning right down to neighborhood level planning. What are the goals and pathways? All people, we've heard some, about some ex exceptional projects uh, already having to do with community equity, having to do with involvement of the private sector. And this, as is, as is true of any planning system in cities, recognizing the needs and hopefully addressing the needs of all people. All communities, we're trying to think about how this might apply not only to our largest cities, but medium-sized cities and even rural towns and smaller communities. As you can imagine, to think about a product then that embraces all of these dimensions and geographies is not easy. But on the other hand, think about city systems where that has indeed been achieved, expressed in different ways in different locales, but nonetheless, this uh, notion of a full city system and how it is um, envisioned and managed. All scales. So planners work from the citywide comprehensive planning, strategic planning, decade long or longer to that very engaged neighborhood planning level. And we're building that scale into these guidelines as well. And then, um, Best practice now in planning is professional collaboration, trying to find bridges across various departments within a city so that indeed the people who are professionally uh, more knowledgeable and more experienced in natural resources can engage with people working on climate, can engage people with people working on transportation. Again, thinking about how uh, these interdisciplinary um, professional um, interactions can happen. And again, including community, how to reach down into various communities, including those that have demonstrated disparities or the absence of trees and parks and other green elements that were once thought of as, oh, isn't that nice to have? But now we know are profoundly important for human health. So our outline of products, there will be a written technical report uh, PDF, no doubt, distributed webs by way of website and other forest service and um, uh, the city, Vibrant Cities Lab, um, and uh, also some technical workshops to try to engage planners, some of the early adopters, if you will, to uh, take this up. Um, uh, so the evidence to action, making the case, engagement guidelines, borrowing from standard practices of planning as they are now uh, often incorporated in cities. Uh, how do you literally, again, place nature in communities from streetscape to park, thinking about connectivity, thinking about nodes and corridors, enabling physical activity, and enabling mental health benefits, enabling schools, uh, children's benefits, and so on. And then implementation. And this is where we might be, have to be a little more creative and can appreciate some of your input because there are not a lot of good examples out there, at least to the best of our knowledge. Perhaps you all, and this is certainly the benefit of presenting before you all, is perhaps you know of some instances of this sort of scale of implementation. So we'll be thinking about carrots, sticks. What, is, what are some regulatory opportunities? But what are some incentives that might, you know, maybe some of the corporate uh, engagement uh, might be a, a part of that uh, incentive sort of regime. We'll think about that. And of course, the Environmental Finance Center will be uh, right up front in terms of thinking about the economics of this. So our call to action, how might you become a part of this project? And we have multiple choices. Um, I teach. Uh, at a university and multiple choice for projects is always good. So you might wish to serve on an advisory committee to help provide intermittent feedback on the development of the project. And we're now uh, assembling and recruiting for the advisory committee. You might, as you have heard, even this brief introduction, think of a case study, uh, think of a situation Think of uh, something that we, we might use for those side texts 
boxes or an appendix or some way of displaying, yes, this can be done. This is practical and the time is ripe for this. The next one is to share synergies with your own projects. Maybe there's some things that you are doing in your own organization or in your own projects that have some overlap or might inform what we're doing. And we'd be very welcome to any of those conversations. In time, uh, we will uh, appreciate help in providing technical input on various or translation to resources. So we'll be, we are gathering, gathering uh, 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 an overwhelming amount of material to make it concise, to make it, and to have a hook that planners would find of interest and willing to engage and, and connect to this. Uh, providing that sort of feedback, again, perhaps based on your own experience working with planners in cities and communities. We will need many eyes to help review final products. Are we, uh, uh, are we achieving the right tone, the right level of detail or too much detail? Are we using the language of planning? That's very important to us because in our, our work with Sagar, he has been so resourceful and so helpful in helping us understand the terms that planners use that may be analogous to what we use, but they're just different enough uh, that we want to make sure we uh, uh, connect with them directly. And then in time, we, we want this to go forth and prosper. And at that time, perhaps then some of you uh, could be helpful in routing through your own organization, through other channels that we're not aware of. All right, you're not sharks, you're friends. Do any of you want to take on our visionary and impactful project? I thank you for your time. I went through these slides quite quickly. I have shared uh, a PDF of the slides in the chat if you'd like to take another look at this. And I, I believe this session is recorded as well. Uh, Jenny Egan is our primary contact. If you wish to reach out, please do so. We also have a Google form where you can enter your contact information and some very brief thoughts about your potential contribution or plural contributions. Or if you wish, please use that QR code um, and that will take you to the Google form. And again, I've, I've gone through this very quickly. I don't know that I've done justice to the project. Jenny Egan is uh, with us here and she may have some comments to add to what I've said. Uh, but we see this at, as the time is ripe. I've had so much contact from writers, from scientists from around the world, from community leaders. Yesterday, I did an hour and a half hearing with the City of Seattle Hearing Board regarding uh, future upzoning for higher density housing and how trees fit with that. And health is the connection. So um, while urban forestry provides so many benefits in our community, so many ecosystem services, we are focusing on health, human health response and expression as the, the primary messaging and conveyance for um, this project. So I thank you. And I think we have some time for questions and comments, but I do turn this over to Jenny if she would like to add anything. Hi, thank you, Kathy. No, I think you did a wonderful job. Um, you have very in-depth knowledge in this subject matter of humans and nature. And to just circle back to what Janice asked, so how wonderful Sufek is. Um, I had attended the first time in 2020 and that's where I met Sagar. Kathy and I had been working before on a, on a previous um, US Forest Service funded project. So that collaborate, the collaboration that happened at the 2020 meeting when we were actually in person um, spurred this particular project. So it's just been wonderful. Um, and I just love to see all the faces that I saw in 2020, wish we were together. 
Um, but yeah, let's, um, I really want to hear, there's some things in the chat and thank you, Matthew, for the, that's great. There's been a, there's been a couple things that have come out, but nothing quite what we're trying to hit here. Um, so are there any questions? I want time for people to. Feel free to pop questions in the chat or uh, pop yourself off mute for a moment. Some great positive responses in the chat and interest in reaching out to you. I'll leave it open for another minute or two. Kathy or Jennifer, you have an additional comment or two you'd like to take a moment. Otherwise, we'll uh, thank you and move on. Either way is great. Uh, I'll just say again, the um, there's a spark out there. There's a spark of the importance of trees and, and nearby nature in our cities. Is it the consequence of COVID and people um, recognizing the value of nature in their lives, nature respite, going out for walks, seeking time outdoors by themselves with loved ones? Um, is it because associated with COVID is a growing reckoning of the burden of health? Um, and how lower socioeconomic communities, communities of color, uh, are demonstrating greater health challenges. Uh, whatever the reasons, and there are many, there seems to be a convergence of interest and understanding, more importantly, understanding about uh, the importance of nature, nearby nature experiences by city leadership. So, you know, if we would have attempted this project a decade ago, I, I don't know if it would have gotten traction. I think we do have that opportunity before us now. And simultaneously, the Biophilic Cities Network is, is taking off. And that has been uh, underway, bubbling along at the University of Virginia with uh, Tim Beatley, an urban planning professor for several years. Well, decade, I guess, close to a decade. And that too is taking off. So we will be careful that we don't overlap or maybe, maybe we look at more as reinforcing the biophilic cities uh, 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 concept, notion. So anyway, that's, that's where we're at. I think we're at a really good time, not unlike some of the other projects that we're hearing about today. There's, there's something out there. There's something stirring that's embracing what we bring to communities. 